Hello everyone and welcome to a new live uh, broadcast. Uh, I hope you like uh, my change of scenery. Uh, on a regular basis, I've been sharing uh, some, some thoughts and reflections about uh, my career. And in my series, Reflections uh, with an Accent, I interview very interesting people. For example, the other day, I had a wonderful conversation with Sven Lindblad. But here in the channel, we have had uh, Wade Davis, uh, Patricia Wright, and a large number of people that I have decided to join this humble uh, project to talk about creativity and art. I don't know what it is, but I have a special pleasure in sharing uh, reflections and thoughts, but also introducing an audience to new ideas and projects. I think and this is connected with the fact that for the last uh, almost uh, 10 years, I have been sharing my passion about photography and geography on board expeditions around the world, normally working with National Geographic and Limblad expeditions. And now that I mention Limblad expeditions, uh, there is a very interesting uh, heritage of exploration and innovation in this company. So I would like to take this opportunity, considering that, as I mentioned, I interviewed Ben Limblad the other day, so you discover and learn a little bit about um, the history of the company. It's been more than uh, 50 years that Lars Eric Limblad, Sven's father, chartered a ship and brought the first non-scientific travelers to Antarctica. I think that was in 1967. Uh, so uh, let's go with the video and I hope uh, you'll find it interesting. And I just want to add something um, before I disconnect and I'll let you enjoy the video. Um, if you like these improvised uh, lives, I uh, would appreciate if you leave a comment, like or share with, with friends and colleagues. And I will be talking about a wide, diverse range of topics. So let's go with the video and hopefully technology won't fail and we will be able to see it. The, the name Limblad has a special place in Galapagos. When uh, Lars Limblad came in the late 60s, it started off a new way of carrying out tourism in the Galapagos Islands. One of the things that my father was often concerned about was what would be the effects of tourism anywhere in the world where it hadn't been before. When he came here in 1967, he immediately commissioned a scientist to do a study on what would be the long-term impacts if more people came to visit the islands. And what that scientist discovered and the recommendations that were put forth to the National Park, they still are largely intact today. He also financed the first National Park Rangers back then. So when you think about that in the 60s, he was quite far ahead of his time. But people know him here in the Galapagos very well. They know what he did. They know what he stood for. They know how we have taken on that legacy and expanded it to help preserve these places into the future. 